okay ls549 this is a web a, a application of web technologies today i'm going to talk a little bit about computers and the internet last week um, i made a presentation on our uh, library website and see and did uh, like a scan of the uh, uh, web technologies that are used in uh, the Clarion uh, University library website. But all uh, with applications, I think it's also important to talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the internet and the World Wide Web too in a more technical way. So we can integrate both uh, 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 type of information and knowledge. In one way, we see the applications in the library, and that's what you have done with your H1, with your scan of web uh, technologies applied to libraries. And on the other hand, I, I do the same thing too, but also I like to talk a, a, li a little bit about uh, the internet and the, and the technologies that uh, are uh, driving actually uh, the economy and the world today and that, I think that's that that it is very important because uh, one supports the other okay one one thing that uh, it is very interesting and I was reading and I would like to to talk to you about that is that how the uh, how what we think about computers have has changed so much in the past uh, Computers, when they were first developed in the 20th century, uh, and at, at the middle or the, be uh, the beginning or middle of the 20th century, the idea was to have very powerful machines that were able to uh, 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 compute uh, data. And if we, we if we go back and read uh, what uh, it was available in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and even uh, later and 80s before the internet became uh, so popular, uh, machines uh, were built to uh, f uh, to do a lot of computation, to solve a lot of algorithms, and they still do. I'm not saying that that's not the main, uh, uh, one of the main functions of the computer it still is the main function of the computer and also uh, uh, in, in terms of how much uh, memory was available to, uh, to have data in, in terms of uh, text, numbers, uh, music, files, etc. Of course, when we talk about data, we have to think that uh, computers work in a binary way. Uh, so uh, it's not what we see, what the computer uh, screen renders is not how it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is storage in the computer. In the computer, it's only zeros and ones, okay, because it's a binary machine. But in any case, uh, in the past, uh, the idea of the computer was a machine uh, that was able to uh, solve uh, algorithms. And it was, uh, of course, um, mainly used, uh, like it says here, uh, to do large-scale complex number crunching and symbol, ma symbol manipulation to support business, government, and science. And, of course, uh, uh, the Department of Defense, too. But now that uh, I think there has been a paradigm change. Again, it does not mean by any way, and I don't want to say that, that computers are not used to manage uh, large amounts of data. They, they are still uh, being used for that. However, the, the emphasis, I think, is now connectivity. And it's connectivity because we have the Internet, okay? Uh, before, uh, of course, uh, in the ninth, in the middle of the 20th century, as we have seen in the other lecture, the internet well, was not around to use as a as a as a mass uh, medium. Uh, it was very limited, and uh, and uh, it's developed. And but uh, uh, in this, as we saw before. Uh, it was uh, limited to a uh, few institutions and the Department of Defense. Now it's a mass media. Now everybody uh, who has, of course, the means, or 
if they can go to the library, have access to the internet. So com when we think about computers today, we, we cannot think anymore as a stand-alone machine because the paradigm has shifted from a, a computing uh, or calculating machine to a machine of connectivity. Uh, before, I remember when I was uh, younger, uh, when I was in college in the early 80s, uh, the internet, of course, it was, uh, it was uh, around, but it wasn't as popular as it is today. And so we, we thought that machines were standalone, uh, computers were standalone machines, that we could use the computer to do uh, calculations, to do word processing, etc., and other things to, to play games, etc. But the idea was that the machine could work by itself. Now that has become secondary. Now, if we're going to get a computer, anybody who gets a computer uh, thinks that, uh, uh, that in its connectivity, in its connectivity to other computers and to and by other computers to other people too. So I think, and this is a very important idea, because when we see libraries, uh, uh, we don't see anymore, and that has shifted to in the when we think about libraries and technologies. Uh, with we at the beginning the computer was there and probably uh, uh, has some uh, data uh, that was storage there from the from the from the physical library itself from that library now it has become a tool of connectivity it has become a, a tool to connect to other computers and to connect to the net that's why we we, we talk about web technologies we don't talk about the standalone uh, computer computer machine anymore it's a, it's a it's a machine that has to be connected so i think this is a this is a very interesting idea and it's it's not a very old idea as i said in the 80s at least in the early 80s when i was in college the the idea was still that a computer was a, a stand alone machine that it needed uh, it didn't need to be connected to other machines but it, it, you, you were able to work with your machine uh, if it had enough storage capacity, enough RAM, enough, enough, uh, if you had a printer, etc. Now, it's inconceivable to think about a computer without being connected to the Internet. So I think this is a very important. And that's why uh, in this class we, we talk about web technologies, okay? Some of the things that are important, here I don't have a title, I make it take this off here. Some of the things that are important in uh, today's world of connectivity and let's, or apply technologies uh, or apply uh, information technologies or web technologies, but we're talking about connectivity, is bandwidth. And bandwidth is a measure of the capacity of a medium to carry a signal. And in order to have uh, that paradigm uh, shift that we have in the 80s and 90s from a standalone machine to a connect uh, to a machine that was that had to be connected to other machines we had to have the infrastructure that was not possible without the infrastructure if we go back again to my to my uh, my young life uh, i had my first modem it was called a modem. Uh, let me write it down here so 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 you so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Modem. Well, a modem was a modulator, demodulator. That was what it stand for, and it was an acoustic modem. So you have to connect your computer. I'm talking about the early '80s, with a with a telephone. Uh, to, uh, to, um, through a acoustic modem, uh, but the bandwidth, the bandwidth was very narrow. So uh, if we measure that, it had very, very, very little uh, uh, transmission rate. Nowadays, of course, we have, uh, we don't use a modem anymore. It's the modem uh, almost in every case, in every computer, is already built in in the computer. And, and we connect at very uh, 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 we can connect uh, by cable 
or we can connect wireless to in a wireless format and the transmission rate is very high so and that has made possible that we think about the computer today as a as a as a as a machine that is a part of a network okay it's not anymore a standalone machine but it's a part of a network okay and some of the things that, that we can do with a bandwidth today is for example the cloud and that's a word that it's a, a relative new word I think uh, maybe the last uh, one or two years or even three years at the most I have heard uh, people talking about the cloud and some examples of course uh, of the cloud is uh, let me correct this is Google Drive for example and I recommend that you use Google Drive or you can use iCloud if you like to use uh, Apple products or if you like to use Microsoft product OneDrive and the idea uh, with the cloud is that you can storage data in a remote host okay so you may have your documents you may have your music you may have your uh, pictures etc uh, you may have data you, uh, or any kind of data these uh, those are data too but you may have other type of uh, numbers etc and they are storage not in your machine anymore but in the cloud and again you have to have the technology to connect to the cloud and that's only possible because the development of bandwidth for example uh, it is it is it is uh, it is a it's a great solution to share data to share data among your peers uh, or even uh, uh, to share data yourself because for example if I keep all my documents in my computer at home then I won't have access from uh, the university from my office because they are in my hard drive well that's not the case anymore because I keep my documents for example in Google Drive and I'm able, I am able to uh, have access to my documents uh, through the cloud and through the bandwidth and to that uh, um, because my computer is connected okay and I storage my documents in the cloud so it is very important and that ha that is a that's a huge an advancement not only for science but for commerce and for any any other activity in 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 our world today and for the library too and this is very important and here is when, what we have to think about connectivity and uh, think about the cloud uh, think about web technologies nowadays uh, we have a huge collection of resources that are electronic resources but we don't have to have them in our physical space in our library we, we can access uh, CD, uh, serial collections we can access uh, 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 photograph we can access music we can access movies that don't have to be uh, a storage in our standalone computers our computers now are connected to the outside world uh, through the internet and that means that any library uh, it may be a small library with a small holdings will have access to a lot of resources of course so and we have talked about that before some of those resources are paid resources okay uh, and they may have a subscription an annual subscription or a monthly subscriptions but there are many resources out there that are of uh, open uh, access which are very important too for any library so the cloud is a very important uh, a way of storaging our documents and sharing our data another important development too and this is you know also in the last few years is uh, mobile computing and mobile computing is possible because now we have wireless uh, networks either by cell phone or by Wi-Fi or by Bluetooth etc there are many protocols of data transmission that uh, do not uh, need a wire and when we talk about uh, mobile devices we're talking about uh, tablets 
or phablets as they call it now that's a that's a, a combination of a cell phone and a tablet and a small uh, uh, laptop computers too that uh, can be connected to the internet okay of course not connectivity doesn't come uh, free you have to pay a price uh, either you pay a price as an individual or the library or the university where you uh, are working on or you want to or you go to study have to pay a a, a, a fee a, a monthly fee normally to a provider okay but we have we have devices and that makes us uh, information consumers with mobile computers and this is something that we have to take into consideration we are not only like before information consumers but we also are creators of information and this is especially true when we use web 2.0 when we're using facebook or or where uh, any social media where when we're posting pictures where we are uh, tweeting uh, where you using facebook or Pinterest or any of the tools available in Web 2.0, we are not only consumers of information, we are creators of information and also, of course, we are disseminating information. And that, I think, is also a revolution. And that's something that we in libraries have to be able to use. Uh, uh, social media is very important uh, to communicate with our communities and we can we can communicate today in a way that it was it was not possible before because we only had uh, telephones or we have the uh, uh, the the main channels the main media channels like television uh, or radio nowadays any small library or large library or any individual can is able to create and disseminate information and of course this brings about many issues uh, security issues, uh, ethical issues, uh, copyright issues, etc. But uh, the idea is that um, the the idea is that the, 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 the technology is there, and we can uh, communicate the message, the mission, the vision of the library to the community, and also we can get feedback from that community because the community now is using uh, social media. Okay, and uh, social media is very, uh, I would say, it's, it's intrinsically related to a mobile computer. Okay, uh, of course, that doesn't mean that you cannot update your Facebook or your Twitter from your computer. I do it all the time. But uh, if you want to uh, uh, share or upload a picture, etc., you can use your computer too. But it's easier or more practical to do it from your mobile device. And we've seen uh, lately new uh, phones uh, coming out from uh, uh, the major brands, and you see how people go crazy in buying these uh, mobile devices because they want to share information. Another development, and that has to do with mobile devices that we have now, is that uh, cell phones are used, uh, in most cases, are more uh, are used to, uh, to browse the internet, to share information, to create information, disseminate for information, and they are used less for what they were created for, for uh, talking in the phone. People are uh, or use instant message, messaging or they use other messengers uh, like Facebook messengers, uh, WhatsApp, etc. And they use less the phone to talk to other people. And that's very interesting too. These are all web technologies. And these web technologies, we can apply them to our library setting. Another big word that it's also uh, recently, uh, that I heard recently in the last, uh, I would say, uh, few years, okay, here it is, is big data. And I'm sure you have heard of the word big data. 
and big data and here's the definition is internet activities uh, because now because of the communication that we have with the creation uh, with, uh, with by consuming information by creating information and by disseminating information there's a lot of uh, data that is being created and that data of course is being used and here we have a definition internet activities such as social media cloud storage website tra uh, tracking data that means that they, they, they know what you're uh, visiting or what you are browsing uh, and e-commerce transactions along with traditional scientific output and government uh, information are all generating huge global data sets uh, that can be mined to identify trends or find new collective meaning. Of course, this is a great tool for e-commerce uh, because uh, now the, through the uh, through the analysis of, of big data that is being generated by the internet, they know what the trends are and what are your, for example, what things uh, uh, are uh, you want to buy, what are you looking at in, in when you browse the web, etc., etc., etc. But it's something that we in the library could use too. Okay. We could analyze uh, patterns of uh, what people, if we, if we have uh, uh, enough, of course, we, we have to have the technology and we have to have the uh, staff. But if we have uh, a librarian who likes web technologies and uh, it's, it's, um, it actively participates in social media, well, that librarian knows what's going on in terms of uh, movies, uh, uh, books, uh, articles, etc. So he knows what, and that's he. That may not be a, a big data analysis with uh, you know uh, with a logarithm or computers and such, but uh, the person will have a sense of what is going on outside the library. Okay, and with that information, you can uh, uh, share uh, sources of, inf of information with your community. Another thing that we, c we do, and I hope you're doing that, once you have uh, a, uh, an online um, uh, OPAC, and, uh, public uh, access catalog, you know, um, and you have collections too, electronic collections, and you have your ILS, your integrated library system, you will know uh, what uh, your patrons are uh, uh, browsing, you will know what books are being circulated, uh, you will know what serials are, are being uh, 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 searched, etc etc of course like like everything with the internet this also brings issue of uh, of, uh, of um, confidentiality okay uh, because the, uh, the information that the library gathers in terms of library usage uh, it has to be confidential it's not to to uh, actually we can use that information but in in a positive way Okay, to increase, for example, certain collections. Okay, so for collection management, it's very important to have those statistics, but we cannot make it known uh, or, or we cannot uh, identify the individual. It has to be confidential information. It's for trending. Uh, commerce, of course, use that uh, all the time. I don't know if you have seen that, uh, for example, when you are browsing for, I like guitars, right? And I look for guitars all the time because I like to see what's out there and I love to see guitars, etc. Well, there is web tracking uh, being done on me because when I go to Facebook, then I see only uh, advertisement about music or music teachers or music schools or guitars or capos or anything related to guitars. Why? Because there is a computer and uh, that's part of marketing that is using the data that I'm generating uh, browsing in the net 
to uh, market the products that they think interest me. Well, the same can be done with uh, libraries to a, a lesser scale because libraries, libraries don't have the, the, the tools uh, uh, to do that type of research. But again, we can do that research through social media and it is very effective. Another very important uh, new trend, of course, is open source. And open source is a movement of free access to programs created as and supported by the by developers and users. Okay, and there are many examples of that, and we're going to see that in the future, especially something that really concerns us that are ILS, Integrated Library System for Library Automation. You will see that there are um, uh, open source uh, programs that uh, you can implement in your library. Also, uh, when uh, we go to to CMS, Content Management Systems, and we're going to do that that experience in the month of November, that's an open source system that is available for uh, managing content in, in any organizations. And it's especially uh, uh, relevant uh, for libraries too. Finally, another important uh, issue in, in regards to the internet, of course, is internet collaboration, and that means, and that means, Web 2.0, and that's something also new, so, uh, because now we have a way, and I mentioned that before, of uh, uh, consuming, creating, and disseminating information. So I think that when we talk about uh, web technologies applications we have to think that uh, also in how computers have shifted shifted from the standalone computer to the uh, computer that needs connectivity and that's that is also a definition or or it's a practical definition of web technologies okay all right, thank you so much.